Things you learn to live with. Oh, goodness. Developer time is not 9 to 5, Brian. That's true. Did you know that? No. How many times have you woken up in the middle of the night with an idea that you had to just get up and work on? Twice. Only twice. Just get, all the time. That is a lie. All the time. I know that's all, because I know that I have, like, I have Usually spoken to you. every hour on the hour, all night long. <laughs> so these are things that you learn to live with. Everything's not ideal in this industry. Your time is not 9 to 5. No, absolutely not. You may clock in 9 to 5, but you will be solving a problem at 3 in the morning, at 8 at night, at 6 in the morning. Yep, yep. Anytime. Yep. Yes, and w whether you're actually on the job doing it, or whether you're out at a bar having a drink doing it, whether you're sitting in bed at night, inspiration will strike you at the most inopportune times. This is something that you're going to have to be aware of, and over time, you just learn to live with it. It's just it's just a part of it. Mm. You're in a creative field. You know, it's, it's sort of almost like music, musicians will, will, will have this, where they'll have like a recorder next to their bed. Right. Or if, if they're dreaming about a song, they'll oh, wake up and they'll play it. Yeah. It's, it's a very similar type of thing. So your work will come home with you. Absolutely. And not only is it that you'll be inspired at strange times, but you do have to learn constantly. You know, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about research. Technology is constantly changing. Always. So you always have to change the technology. The only way you can do that is to learn. And you probably won't have enough time on the job to learn. Not only are you going to be thinking about your work from time to time, but you're also going to be learning about your field. And those people that don't take the time to follow technology very quickly outdate themselves and make themselves irrelevant. Yeah. So you definitely decrease your value. Also, you have to understand everything about your projects. Oh, yeah. In order to deliver a good product, you have to understand what's being delivered. Because most times, the person who's giving you the requirements won't fully understand the they're requirements a, they give you. They're not, a, they're not a tech person. Right. Yes, that's so, true. So you have to be able to make some decisions for them and keep them in the loop, but you still have to be able to translate that down to a technical level. And the only way you can under do that is to, to understand fully your projects. That might require after-hour learning time as well. Yeah, and a lot of times in requirement collecting exercises, I know you and I have fallen victim to those miscommunications where information is just not given correctly, and you're forced to make assumptions that in some cases are just flat wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, And it's not your fault. You, know, you just made an assumption because there was... Information was not given yeah. to you, or information was actually given to you that was wrong, Correct. which happens too. So you, th that's just something that you just have to learn to live with. You do the best you can. You try to follow up with the stakeholders as often as you can. But The industry of software development um, is very diverse. In some companies that do certain types of things, you might see certain constraints on demographics, but you probably won't find that as much in software development other than that it's kind of sexist. It's a male-dominated, generally, industry, but... That doesn't mean that it's anti-female. Yeah. Uh, most cases when I've seen a female developer apply for a job, they usually have a higher probability of getting the job because they offer a unique point of view. Mm -hmm. And most development groups are always looking for more unique points of views. Mm -hmm. And finding a female developer is few and far between. So if you are a female and you're looking to develop, you're extremely valuable just by the nature that you're a female. But that said, it is a male-dominated industry. Also, most people in this industry will tend to be more on the nerdy side so they won't be quite so good old boys club jockish, right. yeah, right. putting down yeah. the girl. So, so you won't, you probably won't deal with a lot of sexual harassment. You probably won't deal with a lot of sexism, but it is a male-dominated industry. If anything, they don't know how to deal with females, right? So, so you'll probably have more powerful <laughs> over the groups because yeah. they'll just cower in fear that you're female. Well, you know, it's funny phenomena you just mentioned because I can recall, you know, you, you and I talked about this back in college that. You remember, like, the computer science, like, the introduction to computer science course? Hmm. You know, maybe it was, like, I don't know, like, mostly guys, but a good portion of, of females. But as you went further along the curriculum, less girls, less girls, and to the point where we graduated, zero girls. Right, and it, it's definitely not a matter of female competency. I think it may be more of um, what the expectations girls have. I think part of it also is that all technology tends to be geared towards guys. I mean... Go to a game store. <laughs> how many how many games that have cutting edge graphics and cutting edge technology are cutting edge in ways to shoot somebody or to race a car? So they're definitely geared towards the male soldier, the male race car driver. Right. So the well, video game industry may, but that's one thing to keep in mind. At one point, nursing was female dominated, and now, now it's, it's not. Right. And you know what? Over time, this trend will also be the same as software development. Now, Brian and I welcome this. I mean, this this is a good thing. Yeah. You know, but you 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 don't only deal with gender uh, 
issues. You deal with ages. You deal with cultures. I mean, a, yeah, a lot it's of times... It's very culturally diverse, and it's very, very age-diverse. The age-diverse thing, is it can be very frustrating, especially for the young guys and gals coming out with the most cutting-edge technology that they just came from, from training school or college with, where you got a chance to see all the great, amazing stuff that's out, and you get to toy with it, and then you go to a place that's a lot more conservative, where you have guys that are more set in their ways, they're a little bit older, they use older technology, they don't want to move forward. So that kind of thing gets frustrating. Right. A lot of places you'll run into um, older developers who won't even know what object-oriented programming is. Or will complete, like, for example... Or refuse to accept that it's of any value. Or refuse to accept the language as, as, as a legitimate language. That's like, true. Like, some web guys will say Visual Basic is the language of the web. Right. But more and more, that's changing. But maybe in 1994 or 93, <laughs> when that was right. For two years. But <laughs> That was right, but you know what? I'm sorry, dude. It's just not moving... It the trend yeah. is not moving in that direction. So... So don't fight this because you will kill yourself. You will drive. You will have scars in your face from banging your head up against the yeah. wall. So just embrace it. Try not to be confrontational and cause dividing lines within a department, but just try to embrace it. But also in companies where they have gone through some outsourcing, you are going to be probably working with people that are literally located in different countries. Mm -hmm. So not only are you going to be dealing with cultural differences within your organization, but you may be you may be having having to interact with people that the language that you speak is their second language. So, That's true. so there are going to be some language differences that you have to work through, and that requires patience and understanding. Right. Some other things you'll have to learn to live with is um, how to propose on new ideas without forcing them. This can kind of turn around and bite you if you don't accept this. I know Brian and I in our professional lives have seen this a lot, where managers tend to be very risk averse, and they don't want you and your you know your hotshot ways to change. What currently exists. Mm -hmm. They have their idea of what things are supposed to be like. And if you come in with a new idea, sometimes they just shoot you down. Yeah. And you need to be able to be emotionally strong enough to sit down with a manager or a senior engineer and ha have spent hours putting a proposal together and have them look you dead in the eye and say, no. The, the, the fact of the matter is your idea went across and maybe later on they will see that, oh, maybe this idea has value and later on will come to it. Um, and senior managers do not want to be undermined, but they should be. <laughs> if you're right, they will eventually realize it. I know that we've, we've seen this before. And the best way to be right, the best way in the world to be right, is to let someone else do it and fail. And I might be wrong about this, but I'm still okay with saying I told you so. <laughs> because otherwise... Make sure you document it, though. Make sure that yeah, you, you because, document yeah, it. Because people will take credit for your ideas. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, and, and magically, somebody will come up to you and explain something that you know for damn well sure <laughs> that you explained to them two weeks ago like, didn't we before just have their meeting? idea failed. We just had a meeting about this. I gave you a PowerPoint presentation in an email because that explains this. Because he didn't feel like this. reading the, the text paper. <laughs> so... People will try to take credit for your ideas. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, sticking to the fact that it, it was your idea. But it'll happen. It's bound to happen. People will take credit for your ideas. Learn to deal with it as best you can. I, th I think this last point is one of the most important points that, we've act that we came up with during this entire presentation. I agree. Not every day is a victory. And the, for those of you that have been in the field, this is probably one of the truest things that you've heard. And for those of you going into the field... This is a very important thing for you to hear because you're going to leave work sometimes feeling like a failure because you spent all day trying to get this to work or trying to do this, do this, do this. And sometimes you just leave after working a long day with, with nothing. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say that more often than not, than not that happens, but it does happen a fair amount of times. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to walk away from something. You come back the next day with a fresh pair of eyes. And it's plainly obvious. You saw yes. it, you move on. Yeah, <laughs> so that is true. So don't kill yourself. Just walk away. Relax. Don't worry so much about it. Stress will prevent you from being able to access a lot of your brain. Yeah. Um, so stay relaxed. You'll stay sharp. And that's where that inspiration at 3 in the morning is going to hit you. Hmm. <laughs>